All right, welcome to another edition of Bry's Stuff. Uh, it's gonna be a haul video. I went to Reckless Records uh, yesterday in Chicago area. Of course, support your local record store or they won't be around anymore. Being 2020, had to wear the mask, uh, did the little hand sanitizer before and after uh, searching, but we, we still have to continue to try to go out there, be safe, of course, uh, but support all these stores because uh, these are some crazy hard times. I'll show you the haul. I like to go to record stores like once every two weeks. As you see, I have a lot of records trying to purge some so that I have room to buy new ones. Um, yeah, it's an addiction. All right. So, actually, still look at CDs. Uh, if I could find an album that I don't uh, go crazy for, uh, if I really, really love it, I have to have it on the LP uh, version. But if I, my, if, if I like it, and uh, it's of course looking to be a lot cheaper on CD. All right, so the first CD I got is The Band of Horses, uh, Seas to Begin. Uh, this came out in 07, I believe. Uh, CD, got all these cool little pictures of, of things, emotional things. When you listen to the emotional music, you can look at pictures of emotional things. Uh, it was only $4, so like I said, uh, the LP, I think the, the repress of the LP goes for 16, 18 or something like that. I love the Band of Horses, saw them live uh, once, they put on a great show, a lot of, uh, you know, slower rock kind of nice music, I like how he sings, but $4 on CD is a lot cheaper to get on CD. Uh, the Jesus Lizard Blue, this was their first one on a major label, I think first and last. Love Jesus Lizard, being from the Chicago area, they saw them tons of times. Um, and they always put on a great show and they always uh, seem to capture that uh, essence of the insanity of their show onto their music. I uh, usually get all their stuff on LP. Uh, Blue is you're going to pay a pretty price for Blue. I think it came out on uh, LP very limited um, so it was a time when everyone was getting CDs so that's why. Uh, I don't really want to pay a lot of money for Blue on LP so again four dollars on CD. Got the Jesus Lizard. Um, a lot of people will say this is like their cleaned up sound because they were on a, uh, a big label, but it's it's still Jesus Lizard. Main reason why I went to Reckless, I looked online to see what they had, um, anything interesting, because uh, I was just there previously, uh, a few weeks before this trip that I went yesterday, and this is what I saw, Ministry Cover Up. Uh, their cover versions of Space Trucking, Mississippi Queen, Roadhouse Blues under my thumb. Very interesting versions from Mr. Al Jorgensen and company. Um, this I seen on eBay for twenty dollars. Seen it as high as eighty dollars. Again, four dollars. Uh, so that's why I made the drive into the city to get this. And of course, you always got to pick up other things. You can't just drive to get one thing. Uh, another CD I found. I thought I had this one, but since I've entered all my LPs and CDs into the little app that I know what I have now. Uh, this is one I always thought I had, but I didn't. From Super Chunk, uh, No Pocket for Kitty. Um, Super Chunk is one of these bands, if you haven't heard of them, uh, they were big in the indie scene, um, almost like in the punk scene as well. Um, uh, way back when, scenes were all split up. Uh, today's world, it would just be all as ones. If they came out now, they would be the world's most top rock band, probably. They are just awesome. They're just an amazing band, have a ton of CDs out. Um, get yourself some if you like good old rock and roll music, uh, indie rock, college rock, whatever you want to call it, it's just damn good rock and roll music. Uh, Super Chunk, No Pocket for Kitty, this one's got Skip Steps 1 and 3, Seed Talk, I mean the whole thing is great. Uh, I don't have it on LP, I have almost all their stuff on LP. Um, if I could find this at a cheap price on LP, of the original press I'll probably get it, but until now, CD, four bucks, not bad. I also went to the 45 area sometimes. I don't go to the 45 area. I kind of skipped that. I have a lot of 45s. I'm actually trying to purge some of them. I'll be throwing some up on eBay soon. Um, my rule on that is if I think I could make more than 15 or 20, which is not a lot for 45, there's not a lot of 45s that are actually worth that. A lot of them are just worth a few dollars. Um, but then I'll put stuff on eBay uh, because you have to pay the PayPal fee and you have to pay the eBay fee and all that. So it's not worth it. You're just going to earn like a few dollars off something, I think. I bring stuff in the stores like Reckless to sell back. They're they're really good there. Um, obviously, you're not gonna get a lot unless it's worth something. Uh, but for 45s and CDs and stuff, you don't get too much. But at least that I look at it as kind of that what you get is like almost like a coupon to apply for something you really want. 
Um, worst comes to worst, if they look through the stuff and they don't really want it, uh, you can try half price books. I always tell people use half price books as a last resort. They suck at buying back stuff. They're going to give you a quarter um, on anything. I've had them give me a quarter on a CD that they sell for four. Have them give me a quarter on an LP that they turned around and sold for fourteen ninety nine. Was the sticker they put on there? So they're going to give you a quarter for anything. So as opposed to throwing it out, which is not good. Or if you want to do like a Goodwill, if you you know these albums just aren't worth anything. I like to shop at half price books sometimes, but to sell stuff back there, you ain't getting anything. All right, Coheed and Cambria. Uh, this is the 45 for Welcome Home, their big epic song. Uh, I picked it up. It's for a good price, so I figured I might as well pick it up. I do have this. Uh, they just put out the whole LP. I had it on CD for a long time, and they had the whole LP, and this is just a single, but I wanted to get the single, too. I found this. This is this almost like, what the heck, Atari Yars Revenge. Uh, Atari put out a few um, LPs of... Uh, Missile Command, Asteroids, and Yards Revenge, and I have those. And I was not aware that they put out a 45 of any of them, so I found this one, Yards Revenge, picked it up for four bucks. On eBay, I've seen people put this, or uh, just looked up eBay and, and some other album things. And some people had it uh, for 20, 40, 60, 80, it, I mean, it's insane, but I got it for a few bucks. If it's worth that, great. I'm not going to sell it. I'm just going to keep it in my collection because I love Atari and I love Yars. And I'm glad he's finally getting the revenge that he deserved. So, main reason why I go to record stores, buy records. And here's some of the records. I, well, here's the records I bought on this haul. First up was Alcatraz, Life Sentence. I uh, have no parole for rock and roll. I've owned that since the late 80s, since it pretty much came out. Uh, Hiroshima Mono Moor was the big one on that one. It's the big one on this one. This is the live album from Yngwie J. Malmsteen and the boys. Uh, the singer Graham, uh, I forget his last name, but uh, he was very good. He was in Rainbow, so they did uh, Since You've Been Gone from his time in Rainbow. Uh, Rainbow, of course, had a lot of singers like Deep Purple, Black Sabbath, Rainbow. They all were switching all around. Um, had a lot of great musicians in those groups. Uh, me personally, the Rainbow era that I love uh, would be the Jolin Turner, Turner era. Uh, was Straight Through the Eyes, I think it's the album. Uh, Power, Street of Dreams, all those songs from the Jolin Turner era. A lot of people would disagree with me and say, the only good era of Rainbow was when Ronnie James Dio was in it. Um, I like his solo stuff a lot. I like it when he was in Black Sabbath, of course. Um, but his stuff with the Rainbow is good, but it's not my favorite compared to Rainbow. Anyway, back to Graham. Uh, was a short time singer in Rainbow, was a singer in Alcatraz, him and Ingve. Ingve was in the band for a little bit. Of course, then he went solo because he was so good. He had to just go so Just Ingve. All you need is Ingve. You don't need Ingve in band, you just need Ingve. Reckless Records has the best stickers of any album store I've been. I've been music stores around the world, and all the ones you get the like, usually ones where you gotta kind of pick them off, and sometimes you ruin the actual album cover, and then or they put them on the inside or the, the sleeves inside, and you still gotta like use your thumb and pick them up. These ones are always easily peeled off. I don't know what kind of uh, printer or paper they use, but they're always so easily peeled off, and that's great if you're a little. Uh, music freak like me and like to collect things you don't want to ruin what you bought so it's easily peeled off. Every once in a while I'll keep one on just because their uh, descriptions there are pretty hilarious and just to see the original price I paid for it too. But the other thing I found was soundtrack for The Running Man. Cheesy 80s Schwarzenegger movie. I collect soundtracks and don't always know why I collect soundtracks. Sometimes I'll listen to a soundtrack once and I put it in my huge soundtrack collection and then there it sits. Uh, it's just something I like to collect, and I wish I didn't because they cost money, and oh well. Uh, the Running Man soundtrack, this one just came out, 2020. Uh, it's pretty cool. It's two LPs and all that. And so, because I like cheesy, uh, cheesy 80s movies and Schwarzenegger and soundtracks, it was all rolled up in one big win there. And found this one from Beatles. Beatles were one of these bands that, when I grew up, they were like, everyone loved them. Uh, like, you know, they were still considered obviously classic rock even when I grew up. And when I loved them, I was more into Zeppelin, ACDC, uh, Pink Floyd. Uh, I liked the Beatles songs a little bit, but never was huge into them. 
Um, they for sure weren't in my top 10 groups of all time or anything like that. But as I've gotten older, I really appreciate the uh, songwriting skills from obviously all four of them. Uh, so this one has all their slow songs on it, 20 slow songs. Yesterday, For No One, Michelle, Nowhere Man, Hey Jude, Let It Be, Something, Fool on the Hill. So a lot of these songs I'm familiar with, some of these slower ones I'm not, so this will give me a chance. This is a band that put out X amount of studio albums and then there's a ton of like compilation things. So um, if you're not certain uh, which ones to get, you can always start with a compilation like this because there's tons of songs and then you can go seek out what original album these are from. Uh, truth be told, I also bought it because the cover, it's got a tiger on it, on the back cover there. It's got cool drawings. It's also got a tiger on the front. So I work with them at the zoo and have for 20 years. So I love tigers. So anything. Oh, there's Yoko. Boy, she is everywhere. Right there in the artwork, Yoko. Ah, bands love when the guys in the pants include their girlfriends and wives on things. They always love that. Anyway, the Beatles. Yeah, I've got the Beatles. I have a lot of Beatles back there. I also picked this up, Julianne Hatfield. Uh, she was in the Blake Babies, and then, of course, she did her huge solo career, and that's kind of when I heard about her, when she did her solo stuff. Uh, a few years ago, or last year, maybe, she did the uh, Living Newton John. She sung a whole bunch of Living Newton John songs. That was awesome. Um, I did listen to this one on YouTube before I purchased it. Uh, yeah, I, I think I'm going to enjoy it. I love the police. Um, but some tell me I'm probably going to like the Olivia John album more that, that I have from, that this one will be good, but not as good as that, but I still picked it up. I love that she includes herself in the bands, it's kind of cool. Alright, now we're going to the represses. I found this, I've seen this in the store for a long time, I think it's been out for a few years and finally picked it up. Anthrax, Persistent of Time, uh, originally came out in August of 19... 90. It's a great year. Jane's Addiction put out uh, Ritual, Daylo Habitual, which is a great record. They put that out in that year. Uh, so a great year for music. It was when um, Heavy Metal was kind of getting overplayed and oversaturated and this weird alternative music was coming up. Uh, Soundgarden and all those groups. The groups that kind of didn't, they weren't straight ahead Heavy Metal, uh, so they were kind of alternative. And then later they just called them all grunge and stuff like that. But uh, Anthrax was still kicking ass at this point. Uh, this is the last LP uh, where Joey sang, and of course he's in a group now. They've been putting out fantastic albums now. Um, but this is the last one of him for a while, and then they got uh, John Bush from Howard Saint for a while. So it's some time. This is actually four LPs in here. I took the LPs out, played all four. All four are great. Another reason why I went, besides seeing that the Ministry CD was there, was Allison Chain's Facelift. This is their first album. Uh, they pretty much signed and within a year or so went into the recording studio. It's one of those success stories. Uh, so when people are in groups for 10, 15, 20 years and they never have a break, they just love hearing about bands that formed and within a year are in the studio recording great albums. Facelift came out also in August of 1990 same time that Anthrax um, came out and these guys pretty much broke really good with Man in the Box being played on Headbangers Ball a lot and then of course the album after this they just exploded. Um, I went to see them at Lollapalooza in 1993 so that would be Lollapalooza 3. I have my shirt from my original Lollapalooza uh, that was 1991 with James Dixon and all his bands. That's the shirt I bought probably just had enough at the time to purchase a shirt and a ticket to the show. Um, times really haven't changed because I still don't have a lot of money. Uh, this is a great one. We Die Young, Man in the Box, See a Sorrow. Uh, it's two albums it's in with all the songs on it so it's uh, like three songs aside. It's a really good record. If any of you heard of Alice Change, you've obviously heard the songs on this. Uh, just came out so purchase it. I like to get the original presses if I can afford them. A lot of these albums came out when CDs were the thing, so the original presses were few and far between, so they can go $60, $80, $100, $200, it's a little bit insane. So thank the Lord for represses and groups that actually keep the represses up, because sometimes the represses aren't kept up and there's not a lot of them and you still wind up paying the same 
freaking crazy high price that he did for the originals almost. So, uh, like Rush, wish they would keep their represses up so they don't pay so much. But I um, uh, love the band, but man, oh man, it's nice when they press a lot so we don't have to pay the crazy, insane prices. So all in all, after bringing a bunch of music in that I got a $30 store credit for, um, uh, I think I paid like $80 for all this. That included that store credit. So I like to keep it under 100 every store visit. And that's all I got. Hope you enjoy watching. Hope you got some ideas of things you want to run out and buy. And uh, thanks for watching. We got Dimension. When the world opens up, go see Allison Chains. I know Lane Saley isn't singing anymore. He passed away a long time ago. Uh, but the new guy they got, not new guy, he's been in the band forever now. Uh, William Duvall. Duvall puts on a great show. I've seen him twice. Um, and they sound amazing. So see Allison Chains when the world opens up, come to your town, go check them out.